think I'm gonna ruin this guy's lunch hour. This is a uh, Robert E. Lee at by St. John. How you doing? Doing a test? Yeah, we do a weekly test here. Weekly what? Weekly water quality test. Water quality, how, how's our quality right now? Uh, usually by St. John's pretty good. So we take 10 samples along the lake uh, with the uh, Lake Pontchartrain Basin Foundation. Yeah. And usually by St. John's pretty good. Yeah. What's yeah. the, are you getting a temperature reading? We are, it's 19.5 uh, Celsius, which is, I'm not that great at doing it in my head. Uh, high 60s? It should be in, in the mid to high 60s. I don't know if I'd say there's a should be, but uh, yeah, and you're gonna get a little bit warmer if you're here. If you're reading it out at 19 Celsius, yeah. it's somewhere in oh, the 60s. It yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just doubting my math. But well, yeah. I would doubt mine too, but I know it's, I know 19 Celsius is somewhere around there. I know that about 25 Celsius. I hate being out here. Uh, it's better when the gates open. Typically, but right now with the, the body carry, it's actually a good um, measuring point to have Bayou uh, body carry not open as much just because it's not getting that influx of nutrients. Yeah. And we're also getting to see the turnaround time for salinity changes. So where this is um, the 1.3, we've got about 0.25 or less, which it before the Mr. Go was open used to be five out there. Yeah. But what we average right now is about two, 2.3. The salinity count of the lake. Yeah. But so the salinity count of the bayou right now is 1.3? 1 1.3, 1 .3, but out there is about 0 0.29. 0 1.3 is not a lot. No, it's not. So there's the kind of a discussion of what do you call the lake since it's been brackish traditionally, but it's been essentially fresh water for so we had the Bonnie Carey, are you local? Yeah. Okay, so the Bonnie Carey, remember last, well in 2016 with the real cold freeze? It opened it, in January. It got open then. So when it was open then, we saw salinity drop, but we haven't had a uh, north pushing waterfront. So we've never seen the salinity change again. So we, you can't quite call it fresh water because you still get some values of salinity. And you'll value. still have some brackish fish in there. Right. It's still an estuary. It's still an estuary and we're just not seeing the same migration patterns that would lead the estuary. We're not seeing the same migration patterns like if this is the whole of the lake, we're not seeing it intermixed to where they're really traveling a lot. They're starting to pocket. So you yeah. do have the, the brackish fish, but... Not like you used to. Not like you used to and it's an internal discussion of um, what do you call the lake at this point? I mean, it's hard to call it an estuary. It's hard to call it brackish because it is but if we're not getting like higher than 1.0 on on salinity that, is that all year round i'm sure that this, fluctuates it fluctuates but not by much your gross average is really low and um definitely catching more freshwater cats yeah in the lake and because of the freshwater quality of the lake right now right you're getting uh it's pretty much like whatever gets into bonacary or comes into the lake through the the north shore river systems right can just stay in the lake or yeah. it'll it'll get in here or get in one of the canals right so yeah, that's, that's how we, we, we have tilapia now in yeah. by st john that's great dude. yeah i haven't seen a lot i've seen a few on the shoreline and i've caught at least one Right after the summer after that January opening, yeah, I caught a tilapia. Uh, I didn't even know what it was. It took me. A, people had to tell me. I, I thought maybe it was a slit, cichlid or something. It's not a real grand cichlid that I caught. It's a tilapia. Huh. Caught it in a net. So there are also some scant reports of like uh, Asian carp, silver. And well, big head in the that I'm not gonna be surprised about. They are uh, no, they're in the bayou, uh, yeah. they're in uh, 
Bonacary, and they're in yeah, the they river. Get, they get deliberately released as part of aquaculture from. I don't agree with this practice, but the the idea is that they can genetically neuter them, so they're all male. But we've seen that not work, and if just one. Are you talking through, about Asian carp or grass carp? Asian carp. So there's a, a process that they're doing this in, in a lot of um. Like a lot of the pond systems on the North Shore, because the idea was that they wouldn't get out, but they get out everywhere. Asian carp are very like proliferous. That once you got one reproducing, there's just gonna be thousands in the space of less than two years. So I'm not shocked. I mean, it was just one fish store sells it to someone around here, and any of the lagoonal systems is an idea of like trying to keep things back. It's uh, you're just gonna see them in here within the next time period. Eventually, there people have already seen them. Yeah. I haven't seen them myself, but there are some scant reports of them okay. being seen in yeah, I'm not Spanish Fort. It's like you got you, you only have like gate systems, but you actually have a few um, pipe tunnel systems that connect here. Like you have the weir down there connects into City Park, and the idea is that it flows here and there. But every so often, you will get a backflow. It's very rare, but. Huh. If you get enough rain flow into the, the park, it'll... There's definitely fish in there. There are. In that tunnel. Yeah. So once you get that balanced out, they'll come back in. So if there's Asian carp anywhere in there, they'll come back out here. And we definitely have them on the North Shore. We have videos of them, like, hitting one of our mapping people. They were jumping in the boat. Yeah. So that was... I've got some videos of them. Yeah. I'm, I run a, a YouTube channel called M Hood Fishing. Called what? M Hood Fishing. M Hood Fishing. M Hood. Okay. My last name is Hood. Gotcha. So, I'm, I'm filming right now. I was just was about to catch bait. It's kind of an impromptu uh, uh, interview, I, so, I suppose, sure. if you don't mind. No, it's fine. very, very, uh, very interesting. What's your name? Will. Will. Pastor Will. Bob. Mark. Hi, Mark. Nice to meet you're you. You're of uh, the Pontchartrain Foundation, right? Yeah, like Pontchartrain Basin Foundation. Basin Foundation. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Well, we'll make that a little video. People right. need to know some stuff. They'll pick me apart because I'm. Have not... you seen any uh, mullet or bait jumping here? Um, it's amazing how clean this water is right now compared to what the lake is. Yeah. Well, we yeah, got the the gate control is going to keep a lot of that out. But yeah. you know, a big part of that, I mean, you get what's coming in there. You're only really getting that top flush, so you're not getting a lot of that intermixing coming through. Right. And I, on my way here this morning, before I started filming, when I hit the bayou at Esplanade, mm -hmm. I noticed it was clean and clear, you know, fairly so. As I got closer to Robert E. Lee, I saw that the clarity seemed to be changing a little bit, like getting yeah. a little dirtier, but not bad. Yeah, you're Just a little that, different. Um, so you're getting a lot of the river water. That's what we're looking at in the lake. If you look at it, from a satellite view, a lot of that uh, darker tint, I mean, you definitely have turbidity in there. You have suspended solids. Yeah. But in general, river water is going to be darker, not because of what's in it, but because of the tannins. Yeah. So you have the leaves breaking down. That's going to dye the water. So it's once, stained. Right, exactly. So once that's full of the lake, which we've got now, we've got essentially 100% replacement of river water to lake water. Once that's hitting the, the bayou's mouth, it's going to start feeding in. I don't know if that's all that's going to happen, but I think that most of what you're going to see as far as that darker tint, if you look at it from Right now, the tannins are strong. If they yeah. were weaker, it would be like cheap coffee. Right, yeah. Yeah, and the tannin-stained water that we've seen, I mean, you're looking at tannin-stained water all the way up from Michigan, so yeah. everything from there is going to have some of that in it. And it's just, when the body carry opens, you get a... And when it's fully open, you're getting a replacement of the lake's volume, essentially once per week or greater. Um, if it's fully open and it's at its crest, I think it's actually down to like three or four days, but I'm not an expert on that side. But that's what I think I recall being told is that. So you're getting that replacement at least in the space of a week. And since it was open and high flow for as long as it was, yeah. you got a lot of tannin soaked water. And there's still some flow coming through there, right? Um, I think I was told the last bay was shut down sometime this week or the end of last week. But yeah. the bays are always going to be leaking a little bit. Like they're not like a hard Through the, solid water. We call it the, if you've never been there, we call it the pins. He's been there, right. but I'm talking to you, the people yeah. watching. So the base of the, of if you want to call it a weir, is concrete. It's the flood structure. Yeah. And then 
we have these pins which are like railroad ties and those are what's in the bays that's what we pull out and put back in to close and open and there there's what maybe that much space between them yeah there's not much but then you got to consider how old are those pins so how uh yeah really lock tight are they so the little older ones are probably going to leak a little bit more and it would probably collapse on itself if they were completely solid so it's in the best interest of the system that they at least drain sunlight at all times yeah there's probably still some flow coming yeah. through it just not as much as say last month Right. When they started closing the bays, what, two, three weeks ago? Um, I'm trying to remember the emails I got. So I'd say they don't fully open them all at once. So they open... No, process. Right. So it takes a couple days if the goal is to open all of them. It'll still take a tough couple days, and they've got to move along it and relieve pressure so it doesn't create too much pressure at one point. But when they close them, it's the same process. This is one of the noisiest interviews oh, I've ever yeah. done. But yeah, it's the same idea that they, they close them slowly so as to relieve some of the, the pressure. And once the flow is low enough, they can just put the last one in. I think the last one got closed, without checking my email, I think the very end of last week. But it definitely was, um, it takes several days. So probably like a week to a week and a half to get them all open if that's the goal. Yeah. And again, I'm not like uh, an expert on that. I'm just going by the emails that I get sent. And I don't know if they do it the exact same way every time they open it. I know that it's dependent on um, the flow rate to yeah. decide how much they're going to open and how much they need to release. Uh, that's something we learned recently. We used to think it was volume, but it's actually the, the flow speed. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I want to get back to fishing, Will. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Thanks for, for talking. Uh, talking to me for a while. Sure. Yeah, you're right. I hope everything I said was correct. I always uh, doubt myself a little bit. Well, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of doubt in the world. Be honest. Yeah. Have a good one. All right. See you next time.